How did the Enigma machine work? How did Alan Turing break the Enigma using the Bombay machine? In this series of videos, we explore the Enigma machine and the Bombay machine, which we have built from scratch in a virtual environment so that we can actually see them working inside out and understand every aspect of these incredible machines. Welcome to Ingenious! In the last episode, we have seen how the Enigma machine worked by examining the machine right down to every single wire, switch, and light bulb. Now, we will explore how the same Enigma machine was cracked by the mathematicians at the Bletchley Park. If you recall, the Enigma machine uses two contact switches in its keyboard. When the key is pressed, the switch output wire connects to the battery's positive terminal. When the key is not pressed, the switch output wire connects to the light bulb. In this case, key for letter E is pressed and light bulb for letter T is glowing. Notice here that the current reaches till the light bulb T, passing through the switch for the letter T. Now, let us look at the light bulb for the letter E. As the key for letter E is pressed, you can see that the corresponding light bulb for the letter E is cut off and there is no way it can glow as long as the switch for the letter E is pressed. This tells us that in an Enigma machine, no letter can be converted to itself. E cannot be converted to E, T cannot be converted to T, and so on. This is the first weakness of the Enigma machine, which we will exploit to break its code. Let us say that we have intercepted the following radio transmission. And since it is intercepted at 6 a.m. in the morning, we expect it to contain a weather forecast, something like this. Weather is clear, Heil Hitler is our guess. The question that remains is, how do we match the letters between the intercepted message and the guest message? This is where we are going to exploit the first weakness of Enigma. Let us align our guest message at the very beginning of the intercepted message. The very first pairing of letter implies that W got encrypted to W. As we have seen, no letter can be converted to itself in Enigma. So, this alignment is not right. Let us slide the guest message by one step. Again, we have letter A getting encrypted to itself, which cannot be right. Sliding again. We have L and R matching. Let us continue sliding till none of the letter from intercepted message matches with the corresponding letters from the guest message. Voila! We found a case where none of the letters are getting converted to itself. This pairing between the intercepted message and the guest message is also called as a crib. So, we have found a crib. Just as a check we can slide further to check whether we have one more crib in this case, which is a possibility. It looks like we have only one crib in this case. This makes things easier for us, since we now have a definite one-to-one -one correspondence between the intercepted and guest message. Just as a side note, this pairing is the same one we had gotten in episode 1 and 2. So, we are effectively trying to break the code from the encrypted messages from episode 1 and 2. And if we are successful, we should get the same settings as an output, which were used back in those episodes. Now that we have a crib, let us try to understand how the Bombay machine worked to use that crib to crack the enigma. Recalling the flow of letters from episode 2, the letter first goes through the plug board, then through rotor 1, rotor 2, rotor 3, gets reflected onto rotor 3, then to rotor 2, rotor 1, and back to the plug board, finally lights up the light bulb. Among these series of conversions, the rotor 1 to rotor 1 conversions are only dependent on rotor positions. In other words, these conversions are functions of the rotor position. Let us assume that the initial rotor position is X. This would be the setting that the person using Enigma would have read in the settings sheet. If you recall, in Enigma machine, the rotor rotates every time a key is pressed. So, we can say that W converts to O at X plus 1. Similarly, E converts to T at X plus 2, A converts to H at X plus 3, and so on. 
Objective of the Bombay machine is to find X and to find the plugboard settings. Let us now see how Bombay machine was designed to achieve these objectives. To understand easily, let us take a simplified example of a crib. Here, A, D, D, add is converted to C, C, A. Let us also assume for the sake of simplicity that there are only six alphabets in English language. A, B, C, D, E, F. In this six-letter world, our 26-letter Enigma machine shrinks to six-letter Enigma machine. Our crib conversion can be represented by using three Enigma machines as shown here. The only difference between these three machines is the rotor positions. A. Converts to C at X plus 1. D. Converts to C at X plus 2. D. Converts to A at X plus 3. We need to find rotor position and plugboard settings where all of these conversions happen one rotor position away from each other. The most obvious way of finding the Enigma settings is to take three Enigma machines. Set their rotor positions one position away from each other and keep changing the plugboard settings and rotor position until you get the conversion we are looking for. This crude method of finding settings is shown here. We have three Enigma machines. Their rotor positions are just one step away from each other. Currently, the setting under test is 111 for the rotor position and AD for the plugboard. The three men operating these machines are continually pressing the same letter and are looking for a particular output, that is, C, C, A, respectively. In this case A, D, D is converting to E, B, C. So, these settings are wrong. We have to try different setting. Here, the output from the three enigmas is C, B, E, respectively. Wrong again. Moving on to the next setting. This one is for rotor position 1, 4, 2, and plugboard setting, B, E. Wrong again. Moving on. Let us check some random settings. At this rotor position 252 and plugboard setting AC, we got to CCA as output, which is what we were looking for. So, we have found the Enigma settings that were used to convert ADD to CCA. This is a very crude and lengthy process to try to crack the Enigma. In the real world, with 26 letter Enigma machines, the number of possible settings are so high that it would require more than a lifetime to check all the settings. Alan Turing wanted to build one machine, which can search for the right settings on its own and, in a much more efficient way. The world will come to know that machine as, the Bombay machine. Let us look at the design philosophy of the Bombay machine. We will start with Bombay rotors. Here are Enigma rotors. Again, they are from the six-letter world. Input is given to the yellow wires in each rotor. Output of each individual rotor is taken from the blue wires. If you recall from the episode 1, rotor 2 rotates one step, every time rotor 1 rotates one complete circle. Rotor 3 rotates one step, every time rotor 2 rotates one complete circle. If we give voltage to the first wire, that is, if we give A as input, it goes through all the rotors and back to give output as B. The Bombay rotors are shown here. They are derived from the Enigma rotors. They essentially separate the return path of the voltage and taking output from separate set of wires. We have two identical rotor ones, two rotor twos and two rotor threes. Again, if we give A as input, it goes through all the rotors and back to give output as B. Only difference between the Enigma rotors and Bombay rotors is that the input and output corresponds to separate set of wires. Bombay rotors and Enigma rotors are electrical equivalent of each other. If Enigma rotors convert A into B, then so do the Bombay rotors. Just for distinguishing the rotors in the return path, let us color them differently. For the sake of simplicity, the six wires can be represented with a single cable, as shown here. 
Notice that, since we have two identical rotor ones, they may as well be physically mounted on the same mechanical shaft. We have enlarged the rotors in the input path. And now, we can place the identical rotors on the same shaft. There you go. This is exactly what Bombay rotors look like in the machine built by Alan Turing. To reiterate, the Bombay rotors and Enigma rotors are electrical equivalent of each other. If Enigma rotors convert A into B, then so do the Bombay rotors. Now that we have learnt about the Bombay rotors, let us introduce the concept of equivalent rotor circuit. This concept is vital for explaining how the Bombay machine works. Let us take the Bombay rotors at the position 1 1 1. If we give A as input, it goes through all the rotors to give the output as B. So, we can draw a line connecting A and B in the equivalent rotor circuit for this rotor position. If we give B as input, it goes through all the rotors to give the output as A. So, we can draw a line connecting B to A in the equivalent rotor circuit. If we give C as input, it goes through all the rotors to give the output as F. So, we can draw a line connecting C to F in the equivalent rotor circuit. And, similarly, we can complete the equivalent circuit for the rest of the letters. The rotor equivalent circuit is electrically equivalent to the rotors. If the rotors convert F into C, the equivalent rotor circuit will also convert F into C at that rotor position. Let us advance the rotors by one position. The equivalent rotor circuit is completely changed. This should be obvious because of the fact that the electrical connections of the rotors change as the rotor position changes. Now, let us build the electrical circuit for the Bombay machine. If you recall from earlier part of this video, input letter goes through these sequence of conversions before the output is generated by the Enigma machine. The rotor conversions in this diagram can be replaced by the Bombay rotors, as shown here. Now, for the plug board, there are six possible connections. If A is not connected to any other letter on the plug board, the input will directly go to the first wire of the rotors, corresponding to the letter A. If A is connected to B on the plug board, the input A will get converted to B, and it will connect to the second wire of the rotors, corresponding to the letter B. Similarly, the rest of the possibilities are shown. We need to find which one of these possibilities is actually true. But for now, all are equally probable. So, we will keep all the wires as a representation of the plug board. Each of the wire here is a hypothesis or a guess, stating to which letter does the letter A connects to on the plug board. Only one of these hypotheses can be true, since you cannot possibly connect A to multiple letters on the plug board of the Enigma machine. Similarly, we can represent six hypothesis wires for the letter C. Now, let us replace the rotors with its equivalent circuit for this rotor position. This circuit is for conversion from A to C. We can draw similar circuits for the rest of the crib. Let X equals 1, 6, 2 be the rotor position Bombay machine is trying out as a possible solution. These are the three circuits we have made based on the crib. The rotors in these conversions are placed one position away from each other, at x plus 1, x plus 2, and x plus 3. Notice that the rotor equivalent circuits are different for each conversion. This is expected as, the equivalent rotor circuit changes as the rotor position changes. Are these circuits connected to each other? If you observe, there are some common cables. Cable D is common between the second and the third circuit. Cable C is common between the first and the second circuit. And cable A is common between the first and the third circuit. Rearranging these circuit connections, we get this circuit. This is what circuit looked like inside the Bombay machine. It is intriguing, isn't it?
To check whether the current position, x equals 1, 6, 2 is the correct solution or not, we apply voltage to one of the wires. This voltage spreads to the all the connected wires. In this case, the voltage spread out to all the wires in all the cables. If you look at cable C, all the six wires have the voltage. Remember how we said that each wire is an hypothesis of where the letter C is connected to on the plug board. And only one of these hypotheses can be true. However, here, since all the wires have the voltage, it is indicating that all the hypotheses are true. This is definitely not possible. So, we do not have a solution at this rotor position x equals 1, 6, 2. As a general rule, if all the wires in the cable set are showing voltage, then we do not have a solution and we need to try the next rotor position. In one go, this Bombay circuit has eliminated rotor position 1, 6, 2 as a possible solution. Doing this manually would have required to check all the possible plug board settings at rotor position 1, 6, 2. This is why Bombay is much faster. Let us move to another rotor position x equals 252. Notice that, at this rotor position x equals 252, the rotor equivalent circuits have all been changed. Now, let us apply voltage to one of the wires. In this case, the voltage did not spread to all the wires. We have one wire, in each cable, which carries the voltage. So, we have found a solution. If we look at cable C, hypothesis that letter C is connected to A is found to be true since the first wire has the voltage. The solution wire has isolated itself from the rest of the bunch. Bombay has identified the solution for the rotor position as X equals 2, 5, 2. And, the determined plug board settings are C is connected to A, A is connected to C, and D is not connected to any other letter on the plug board. This is where the Bombay machine would stop spinning and checking for further rotor positions. This is the philosophy and the underlining principle of working of the Bombay machine. This is the crib we just used to break the Enigma's code. This is a special crib. It can be rearranged to form a loop. If you recall from episode 1, same Enigma machine is used for encryption and decryption. So, if A converts to C for a particular rotor position, C also converts to A for the same rotor position. This is actually the weakness number 2 of the Enigma machine that we just exploited to break its code. Because of this weakness, we can form a loop like the one shown here and build a circuit corresponding to this loop. For Bombay machine to work, we need to find loops in the crib like the one we have here. Only loops are useful in breaking the Enigma with the Bombay machine. In summary, cracking the Enigma with Bombay machine involves three steps. First, is to identify loops in the given crib. Second, is to connect the Bombay rotors as per the loops. Third step, is to apply voltage to one of the wires in the loop and run the rotors until an isolated wire is found. In the next video, we will take a look at the full-size Bombay machine that we have built and see it working as per the principles developed in this video. If you think you have got some value from this video, do hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss brand new content from Ingenious. See you in the next video.